Hello everybody, welcome back to Man of the Draft. That's pretty much what I've become recently. I mean, I am doing the other videos, but all the face cam videos have been drafts. I again just want to point out that I am recording these videos pretty far in advance because I am going to be going on a trip, so I want to get this all done. So I'm recording right now, it would be mid-August, and this probably won't be coming out till near the end of August, possibly even early September, but no, I don't think so. I think it would just be late August. With that disclaimer out of the way, Things could change. Maybe players get moved, maybe players sign, and I could have taken them, but at this time, I could not have. But anyways, we are headed back to the East. We are going to the Atlantic Division, which I know the most about. I think for the most part, any Eastern team, I could tell you which division they're in. The West, though, some get a little blurry. So let's randomize a team until we get an Atlantic Division team. We are not having good luck so far. Where was this last time? Last time we were getting all East teams when we were trying to find... Anyway, let's keep it going here. Tampa Bay Lightning, there you have it. What draft pick will we get? I don't know. It's been kind of all over the place recently. I kind of think we're getting a higher up draft pick, but who really knows? It is random. So all the settings seem to be okay. I just need to turn off autosave, injuries, stuff like that, and we are ready to rumble. Let's go ahead and start the career. I think that we should be a high pick. I just have a feeling. Yep, of course. That's always the way it goes, isn't it? I could take Mitch Marner, but that 10.9 is very, very unappetizing. I don't really see any real competitors though, so you know what? Fine, I'll take Mitch Marner. Could take Dylan Larkin. He'd be a good first line centerman. 87 overall, he's got that X factor and an ability to boot. Yeah, let's go with Dylan. I personally have not seen him sim very well. No, that's a lie. I think I've seen him sim well once, maybe twice. But for the most part, he's not really at the top. But anyway, we're gonna give Billy Huso another go today. I swear Robert Thomas wasn't there when he's eligible and there was a whole bunch of Atlantic players and now nowhere to be found. David Perron will be our next selection. 85 overall, not too shabby. We don't have a single defenseman yet, which is phenomenal. Now we're talking. Talking for Haggy, this guy had a complete standout year, 84 overall, 4.1 isn't the best, but clearly it could be a lot worse, so I will most certainly be taking him to be our first line left winger. We do have two right wingers already, but you know what, I'm gonna take Alex Tuck regardless. And next up, I will take Alex Kalorn. This one seems to be falling into place a little bit better, the only problem I have is that we still don't have a single defenseman. Our first defenseman is gonna be Matt Grizzlick, 83 overall. Another right winger, Craig Smith. We're just gonna have to hope for the best, but we really don't have many options here. Michael Bunting, 82 overall, left winger, which we are in dire need of, and he is making less than a million. That couldn't have come at a better time. Mark Giordano's gonna be our second defenseman. He also shoots left, 82 overall. We are not gonna have a cap problem by the looks of it. From the Montreal Canadiens, we take Jake Allen, 83 overall, to be our backup goalie. I honestly wouldn't have known this if I didn't look it up, but apparently Yarn Crook's under contract with the Leafs, so I will be selecting him at 2.1 million. We don't really need to worry too much about contracts though anymore. On that note, we'll take another left-handed defenseman in Jake Muzzin. Our next selection will be Evgeny Dadanov. We still need five more picks. We have 17 million, which is very doable. Some of these wingers are gonna have to play center. It's just the way she goes sometimes. Adam Ernie, welcome to the team. Justin Hall, I'm pretty sure he's right-handed. He is, okay. Well, you're gonna be our first right-handed defenseman. I gotta be honest, these divisional drafts are actually very tough. Connor Clifton, please be right-handed. Yes, you absolute legend. The man who decided to come back to the NHL, David Krejci, will be our, he's our second actual centerman, but you know. You know what? Just because I can and because we have the cap, I'm going to take Jeff Skinner. He can plug in somewhere. It doesn't have to be the first 20 players. We normally just run out of cap and I just let it auto draft after that. But I'm going to take Jeff Skinner and then we have about like $2 million for a defenseman. 2.6. That should work. And there he is. Zach Bogosian. Right defenseman. Right handed. And he is making 850k. Here is our draft summary. We took one more pick than normal, but that is okay. We did not get Ryan Suzuki this time. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I kind of forgot we grabbed Marner as well. I forget most of the picks, so I'm kind of excited to go in and edit these lines. I had pretty high expectations for this draft, and I still don't think we're going to be that good. Like, we look pretty bad, honestly. Our first line is Marner, Larkin, and then Perron. Our second line, we got Krejci, Verhage, and Tuck. Skinner, Yarncrook, Kaloran, Dadanoff, Bunting, and Smith. Our bottom six is filthy. I gotta admit that. Defensively, we just don't have it. It's not there. Because the overalls are so similar, I just move Grizzlick down and Giordano up because we get a 202, which is a lot better than 000. I move Skinner up. He's gonna be on the second line, and our third line's just gonna be really disgusting. All right, one final overview. Here is the team that we have offensively. Defensively, we are quite weak, but hopefully they can get it done. And in net, 
We got Vili Husso and Jake Allen. I feel like I covered all the teams in this except for maybe Ottawa. Sorry, Ottawa. I'm very excited to watch Ottawa play next year, though. I know I've said that multiple times now, but it is pretty exciting to see, you know, all those changes they've made. Same with Detroit. It's going to be a totally different season, I feel like. However, the Atlantic is always very competitive. I'll say we get 43 wins, and I'll say Marner gets the most points with 82. Nice, a hot 1-3-0 and start. Might as well make it 1-4-0, and 1-5. Oh my word, we're 1-6-0. and To be fair, though, we always start off good and do awful. Maybe this is a good sign. Okay, now we're talking. I know some of you guys like to take on the challenges that I do, so I would like you guys to try and do these divisional drafts and let me know if you have better luck than I do but I just feel like all the good players that I want from other divisions are always not there when I need them to be or wait I feel like I worded that wrong all the players from the division that I am currently drafting from are gone but I see all of the other good players from other divisions. I don't even really recall how the Metro draft did, and I recorded that today. But I do feel like that one was a success, where these ones are complete embarrassments. One final game before the trade deadline against the Rangers here. We take a dub. Nice. So we actually do have more wins than regulation losses heading into the trade deadline. And I'm not even going to bother going in. I just want to see how our team could do. Mackenzie Weger got traded to the Buffalo Sabres. And yeah, okay, maybe I should have went in, made some trades. Darn it! Well, it's too little too late. I made my bed. Time to lie in it. Maybe a little bit of loyalty will get these boys somewhere. That's four straight wins after the trade deadline. Hello? We're doing pretty good all of a sudden. Come on, just win some of these games. Just win some of these games. Three. That's all I ask. Win three of the games from these last two weeks. So far, we're at two. Three. Come on, four. We made it! We made it into the playoffs. We just barely snuck in, but we have 91 points and 44 wins on the year. Detroit ended up leading the league, not the league, sorry. They probably did not lead the league with 101, but they led the division anyway. The crazy thing is, look at the amount of wins. They have the same amount of wins as us. They just had a lot more overtime losses. Chicago goes on to win the President's Trophy. They had 52 dubs on the season, 113 points. The next team was Calgary with 51 wins and 109. We were in the top 16, so I'm happy about that and then we have the islanders there at 18 they made it in as well marner put up 81 we got 67 from larkin Krejci put up 57 and then we have 56 from perron skinner put up 44 for Haggy with 44 okay i'm changing the lines up big time billy huso did pretty solid he went 33 25 and 2 with a shutout a 9 13 and 261 so that's probably the best i've seen him sim when i've drafted him which this might only be the second time jake allen went 11 11 and 1 three shutouts 907 277 fazzy led the league with 45 wins he had a 922 save percentage while he was at it and a 242 gaa the only other 920 I can see here is Jari. What a year for John Carlson. Puts up 80 points, almost point a game as a defenseman. Yossi had 66. Makar and EK65 both had 63. And then Miro was 61. Matthews did all right this year. Got 120. 53 goals. It looks like Cooch is going to get the Rocket Richard though as he has 57 goals legendary 116 points from patty kane 108 from cooch so we had three players breaking the 100 mark this year matthews up to 120 which is outrageous mcdusty puts up 95 gensel 93 bergeron 93 i for some reason feel like we don't typically see mcdavid do very good in fantasy drafts and i think that's because you have to have the first pick to get him and then it's a long time before your next pick everybody else gets two picks before you get your next one i changed the defense up very minorly i moved giordano down one pair to hull and muzzin up so we have muzzin and clifton both getting plus one yeah that won't work so we'll do the plus one plus one plus two and i'm gonna let jeff skinner play on the first line with larkin and marner he's a sniper hopefully he can put home some goals which means our second line is now for haggy Raichi, and perron then we have tuck Yarn Crook and Kalorn, Dadanov, Bunting, and Smith. We are a deep team. Obviously, we have Vili Husso and Nett, Jake Allen as the backup. Let's do this. First up, we have Detroit, Vili Husso's team, and the team that won our division, even though we had the same amount of wins and we were way further down. Okay, that's a good start. We're up two to one after three. Will it be a best of three? Yes, it will. How is game five going to go against Detroit? An overtime win. Will they push a game seven? Yes, they will. Come on, Tampa. Let's get past round one here. First period, 1-1 one, one game. Line A and Marner both going to get a goal. Second period, 3-2. We're in the lead for Haggy and Giordano going to get one goal apiece and Kadri will get one for the Red Wings. Here we go. Third period of action. We are being outshot pretty violently right now, but I've seen worse. We are halfway through this third period and it's still a 3-2 game. Let's go. It's a 4-2 game. Kalorn going to bury one. And now we have... The insurance marker. Time's running out for Detroit, but Nylander is going to cut it down to one. Miro is going to tie it up. Are you kidding me? Honestly, say it ain't so. 
Tampa Bay. How are you going to do that? We don't deserve to win anymore. They should win right here. They had a five on three and couldn't capitalize, but they end up scoring. Morgan Frost will bury the overtime winner. What a meltdown for Tampa Bay. Here's your three stars, Kadri, Line, and Frost. I thought we had a real shot there. My hopes were up. I'm not going to lie. And it looks like the Dallas Stars will be your Stanley Cup champions with Pacific Palm Springs HC being the Calder Cup champions. Isn't Seattle's AHL team going to be like the Coachella Valley something? Yeah, we didn't do so good. Perron was point a game. Same with Marner. We we got five points from Larkin and Skinner. So that first line actually did quite well. Hall put up four. Verhege had three. Giordano, Dadanov also had three. Billy Huso did all right. He had a 9-12, 275. So we can't really fault him. Dan Vladar. 16 wins in the playoffs, a 9-10 save percentage. We got a 9-32 from Freddy. That is outrageous. Morgan Riley led defenseman. He had 16 points. He did play 23 games, though. Falk had 13 and 17. Owen Power had 10 points. Sebastian destroyed the league again. 23 games played, 31 points. Cooch had 30 with 24 games played. And Patches almost point a game. Same with Victor Olafson. Let's have a peek at the awards here. There are your team awards. Individually, Matthews gets the Art Ross and the hearts carlson gets the norris kane gets the lady bang zegris with the calder sebastian gets the con Smythe, well deserved the vesna and the jennings both go to vasilevsky mikula gets the bill masterton maroon gets the jack adams barkov with the selkie matthews gets the ted Lindsay, and cooch with the rocket richard there's your playoff tree that's how it all went down i can't believe we lost in the first round i thought we were gonna have it but they got the better of us and to be honest they earned it because we had them down to the rights we had them pinned against the wall and they fought their way out of it well thank you guys for watching i appreciate you hopefully you're enjoying this little mini series here of the divisional drafts this was probably the second most successful one so far but we have the pacific draft coming up next let's see how that one goes i'm recording that right after this by the way because like i said bulk on that note i will be seeing you guys soon